Hi and welcome to another tech video. So today we're going to be looking at this Lenovo Idea Center. So this is an AIO 300, it's a 23 ISU. So it comes with a Core i3 processor, uh, sixth generation running at two gigahertz um, with a boost up to 3.6 gigahertz. Uh, it's got eight gig of RAM in it and it comes with a two terabyte hard disk. So what is the problem with this system? Okay, so this, um, has been upgraded a couple of times and there's been all of these uh, Slim Cleaner Plus driver up data tools added which cause absolute havoc with a machine. So um, they've got themselves into a position now where the system is pretty much unusable. It's running really, really slow. So what are we going to do today? So we are going to upgrade the disk. So it's got a spinning hard disk. It's a two terabyte disk in it. We are going to remove that, take that out, and we're going to replace it with a 256 gig SSD drive. Now, the reason for that is um, they use very little storage. So with everything populated on here, it's using 73 gig across three users. So um, they've got plenty of headroom to grow and we can always upgrade it again in the future if necessary. But the cheapest option for them is to go for a 256 gig SSD drive, which is why we're um, only going to put that size in here. So without further ado, let's get it shut down. I've done the backup of all of the user uh, data, so we can now move on to taking the machine apart and getting the disk out. Okay, so here we've got the device itself. So the first thing we want to do is we want to remove this uh, bottom panel. And to do that, it just literally snaps down um, and clicks off. So we're going to remove that like so. We don't even need to remove the stand on this. It's so easy to, uh, to sort out. So the next thing that we're going to do is we want to remove the hard disk that's here. And again, that just is a simple little push into the tab to release it and then remove the cable here so that's it basically that is the hard disk removed the next thing we want to do is we're going to use this cage still um, so we're going to slide this across a little bit we're going to take the disk out of here and we're going to see if we can use this to fit the SSD drive in. And if we can, then we don't need to use a converter cage. But it does look like in this instance that we are going to need uh, to get a cage in there to secure it properly. Thought I might be able to use one of these converters, but uh, doesn't look like it, unfortunately, because the mount holes are just a little bit too far away. So that means we've got to use a different connector. Right, so we don't have a drive cage that we can use. So let me see if we can mount this so it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so that will go in there. I just need to uh, get a suitable screw. Okay, so there we go. So we've got the uh, got the drive mounted in the cage now. So the next thing, all we need to do is to attach the SATA cable, which there's plenty of room for that to go in under there. 
and then the drive can be or the drive cage can be reinserted back in. There's a couple of clips on the bottom, two pegs that go in, and that just sits in there like that. And then we take the panel again and that will just clip back into place like that and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to load a fresh copy of windows and then we'll get all the user data copied back over and once we've done that um, then we'll come back and we'll have a look to see um, what the boot times are like with the ssd drive So once you've got everything put back together, the first thing that you want to do is you want to get yourself a Windows 10 um, USB boot drive. So we've got one here, um, standard Windows 10 made from the Windows Media Creation tool. Um, and what we're going to do is we've got a keyboard and mouse reconnected and we are going to see if we can boot into Windows. Okay, so we're going to run through the installation of Windows 10 as a fresh install. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got the right country and keyboard and currency uh, format selected. Select next and we're going to click on install now. And this will start the installation program and it should detect the SSD drive that we've installed. So this machine is an i3 processor, so it's not the fastest, and it's around about five years old now. So 2017 it was first installed. Okay, so we want to accept the license terms. And we want to do install windows onto the unallocated drive space, as you can see here, 250 gig gives you 232.9 gig usable. So we say, don't need to format it, that does it as part of the install. Click on next. That then copy the Windows files, getting ev get everything ready for the installation, install the features and any updates that it's got. You wanna remove the boot stick and let it re reboot itself because you don't want it booting from the um, USB boot drive again. So this will now boot from the SSD drive. Hi there. I'm Cortana, and I'm here to help. Yep, so we shut Cortana off. We don't require her speaking to us and telling us what to do. <laughs> okay, so you want to select your region. And then you want to select your keyboard layout. And you can also add another layout if you want to, but we always say skip, because we would just use a UK keyboard. Um, and what we do here is we're gonna say, I don't have internet. 
And the reason for that is we want to create a local user account rather than a Microsoft account. Uh, we can create the Microsoft accounts later. But what we want to do is create an admin user with administrator privileges and then get all the relevant software loaded. So we're going to go in and create a user of admin. And then give it a username and password. And then you want to set, you set your security questions. This will give you the ability to reset your password if you need to and if you forget it. So it asks you three questions. So complete the questions and the answers. And once you've done that, it'll allow you to move on. Okay, there we go. So we always, let's say, we don't want to do activity history across devices and we're going to decline our digital personal assistant. We don't use speech recognition. Um, we do want location-based services. We don't want Find My Device because we're not using a Microsoft account. We're going to select basic diagnostics. We don't use, we don't want to improve inking and writing. We do want tailored information and we do want advertising ID, otherwise you just get bombarded with rubbish. If you're going to see adverts, you might as well have them relevant to you. And there we go, we're into Windows. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get some additional icons on the desktop. So we go to right click on the desktop, go to personalize, go to themes, click on desktop icons. I always add the computer icon, users, files and network. Apply that, they'll appear on the desktop behind us. And then we're going to sort it, we do a right click and sort by item type, which will give it uh, uh, PC, network, recycle bin, and then user. So that's all there is to it, basically. So what we're going to do now, that's actually um, set itself up. Uh, I'm going to do a shutdown. Once that's powered off, we're going to time that on the, uh, the boot up to see how quick that is. So from power on into desktop. Okay, so we've got no power. So let's start that now. Okay. And there we go. So that's nineteen seconds. And then we should be able to log in with our password. So fresh install of Windows on a Core i3 machine from 2017. The boot up time is 20 seconds into the desktop effectively, um, which is much better than it was previously with all of the users previously created on the sort of not faulty version, but um, shall we say confused version on that two terabyte disk so that was taking uh, around about four minutes to get into the desktop um, and then before you could actually do anything it was about 10 minutes whereas this is booted up it's usable things are loaded all we need to do now is to do the windows updates then we're going to go to Len the lenovo website and we're going to install all the relevant drivers from there we're going to also make sure that the bios is updated and if it needs an update we'll update that um, we'll load the software that they want and then we're going to uh, create their user accounts and then copy the data back on. 
So that's all there is to it. If you found that video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I just want to say thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.